Hey guys, what's going on? We're back. I'm Shane. Zach. And we're back here with Star Wars The Clone Wars, Season 1, Episode 13. We're doing a chronological order, and chronologically it's Episode 17. Okay, so Zach, do you remember what happened last time? Last time, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Dooku escaped together, helping one another. Yeah. From Hondo and Naka and the pirates. Yeah. Which was, we, meantime, we both admit it was a little fun, it was a little weird to watch, a little campy. I enjoyed it. But I don't want to see that happen again, or at least not very much. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. It's a once in a once in a lifetime deal. Yeah. The people that wanted it, you got it. For the rest of us, we're good. We're good. Yeah. But, uh, but the great thing was we got to see Hondo Naka, Jar Jar, and that shit the... that on the fucking the rhinos that were outrunning speeders. And... Well, I I, I, I like Jar Jar in this, uh, in this episode because I mean you could argue he might have contributed to the crash and the death of that the terrible death of that senator with his wife and kids being widowed. Yeah. But we got to see Indiana Jones staff of Raw. No. We got to see Jar Jar be compassion. He buried him, and he also was brave. He led the clone troopers in a successful way. He was able to have them hide in uh, those acidic geysers. He almost fell in, in Jar yeah. typical Jar Jar fashion. But he didn't... I think in the traditional sense, he wasn't as annoying as he normally is. Eh, maybe not. Yeah. I mean, he, I, he's I don't, annoying I don't, I don't in dwell, general. I don't dwell on him a lot. Yeah. You just gotta, you know, when you see him on the screen, you know what's coming. Yeah. He's got to shut something off. I admit. So, so this episode... Okay, so remember what happened last episode. This is Jedi Crash. Uh, so this is a two-episode arc, and I like it quite yeah. a bit in terms of season one episodes, which is my least favorite season. This is uh, one of my favorite arcs, one of my favorite episodes. A uh, lot to talk about. Um, I look forward to it. Other than that, I think we should start. Sounds good. Let's do it. I walk up. Depending on the... Prepare the gunships. I love when Van Vader or Anakin says prepare ships. Yeah. <laughs> or prepare the shuttle. A little more powerful when Vader says. In Rogue One, when he said prepare my shuttle. Oh, it's so good. Flying. Like the fucking Daleks from Doctor Who. The Anakin's one of the few Jedi who very much, as Zach would say, heroic leadership, yeah. which is defined by uh, putting your leading from the front. Taking the risks, proving yeah. yourself to your men, yeah, and leading by example, yeah. You know, Ayla Sakura, who I love, she's kind of a typical Jedi. Is at this point we see her kind of giving orders. Reminds me of those fucking droids that were killing those clone troopers out in space yeah. in the wreckage. Like, I did. There you go. Woohoo! Like, oh, they're dying. <laughs> For a lot of George's faults with Anakin is we, we didn't get to see the heroic side of him too much. And t I mean, he had it all in his head. So he knew this is how Anakin was and he knew these stories. He didn't present it to the audience. He didn't present it to the audience and, unless they pursued the books. And we didn't get to see the hero that he was until like the, the, the beginning of the Clone Wars. Right? I mean, the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. You don't want to get Anakin in the hallway. Yeah, it never seems to work out very well. When you see those in Armageddon or sci-fi movies, those little bridges, I would not want to cross them. Up on the bridge right now. Commander Bly doesn't need my help. Anakin does. You can help Anakin by getting the ship to safety. You know, it's the Darth Vader style breathing in. Yeah. The navigation computer is completely fried. Shut down all power circuits to reset the coordinates. That will cut off Anakin's life support. I don't like it any more than you do, but it's a risk we're going to have to take. You can hear it earlier. Yeah. Space. Resume all power. Done fucked up. Shock. Yeah, I, I was feeling some tension that scene, even though I knew what happened. It was weird. <laughs> this is a really cinematic, beautiful yeah. shot. The graphics, they all played out well. Here. So the wreck here is much better animated. Glass breaking and stuff. Anakin doesn't have much time. We have to find help tonight. I can't leave him. 
Master, I know if I was hurt, he'd never leave me behind. I know this is hard, Ahsoka, but Anakin has to stay behind and we have to go now. As a Jedi, it is your duty to do what is best for the group. But the people we're looking for live near giant trees. Very perceptive, Padawan. <laughs> Looking fit of a tree. <laughs> I can still sense your worry for Anakin, your attachment to him. It's forbidden for Jedi to form attachments, yet we are supposed to be compassionate. It is nothing to be ashamed of, Ahsoka. I went through the same process when I was your age with my own master. He was like a father to me. Oh my god, he fiddle fucking around with your rifle. Yeah. He's like full metal jacket, and you're always cleaning it and managing it, and you are not. It was your own watch. Yeah. Serengeti style. We're yeah. We're gonna find Rafiki in this. Song. In the music too. The music, the music's very Rafiki's different. Rafiki's in there. Fucking yeah. drawing pictures of Simba. <laughs> He's back. Watch out! Giant fucking acorns. Yeah. God damn! Pick the fuckers off of the dark, the dark crystal. Behind you. These are fucking dinosaurs, you know? Yeah. That'd wake me the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Like that scene in Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Raptors in the theme. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> They're all like lemurs. What have you come here for? Our ship crashed a few miles away and one of us is fairly badly injured. We need your help. Jedi are no peacekeepers. We're fighting for freedom. And freedom and peace require fear and death. You will only destroy what small amount of peace is left in the galaxy. I'm afraid I must do what's best for my people. We cannot help you. Can you at least give us some medical supplies? My friend is dying. I cannot ignore a plea for help. I will send my son, Wag Two, to help your friend. We won't be long. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Kinda cool. It's on the hedgehog. So yeah. Sure. Our only intention is to end it and restore peace to our galaxy. What difference does it make who started the war and who only wants to end it? No side is free of fault. But isn't liberty worth fighting for? Is it worth killing for? Only when you lay your arms down and pursue a course of non-violence can you make this claim to me. Like a Scotsman. The Jedi are peacekeepers. Yep. No! Don't! Oh. <laughs> are you going there to starve to death? <laughs> Get this peaceful. It's peaceful. <laughs> they even lie. He's reduced to the elements. <laughs> I should have remembered the rules. Don't you worry. I can fix your eyes. Can you imagine in like Revenge of the Sith there's like a bunch of those guys like, <laughs> like working on him? <laughs> <laughs> Oil from the pods will aid in the healing process. They fucking muted it. She's a mesmerizing looking woman, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's based off a real girl, Amy Allen, who Honestly. looks pretty damn similar. Yeah. Guys, that was our reaction to Jedi Crash. Uh, I really like this episode quite a bit. I like this arc. It is a two-episode arc, which I told you. What did you think? Um, I liked this episode. Yeah. I liked the cinematography um, when the cruiser comes out of light speed and they're going around the star. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Mm -hmm. uh, you, did you... This is when they crash and they add so much more effects. Yeah, and that's actually something I have in my notes. So I watched the feature ad on this. And went to Wikipedia as well to do my research on this and rewatch the episode again prior. It's really interesting because they um, they put a lot of effort into making that crash with the glass shattering and things like that, just making it look more real. Yeah. And you, you talked about the ship flying around the star and things like that. Um, so you remember when the ships came out of hyperspace? They that was they were trying to replicate that For old the battle. Yeah, they kind of they're trying to replicate that old Doji f uh, feel and the battle itself. There we had like this. Really cool space battle, like that felt like we haven't had. Oh, like, an it had an intensity to it. Yeah, it had an intensity that was reminiscent of the old trilogy. That was mm -hmm. also an aim to have because we've had battles in space, but they weren't like I guess this.
big space battle on this They're scale. very concentrated. Yeah, even though it was brief. And one of my favorite things is we had Anakin the hero. Yeah. Yeah. You know, his, uh, well, the shot in the hallway, and you mentioned it, never get Anakin in the hallway mm-hmm. kind of deal. Never where, get Anakin you know, in the hallway. Reminiscent of Vader. Mm-hmm. Every time he's in a fucking hallway, people are getting clobbered. They and are. Just, and this came out before all that stuff that we see later. Fucking hacking down people left and right. The scene in uh, Rogue One mm-hmm. where which, he's just slaying people. Which is right. a great scene. <laughs> that was probably one of the most powerful Vader scenes that have been shot to date. It, it is, it, it's weird because like, I know that Vader exists because in my head I knew that. The books I knew that. The comics I knew that. You the, know he's a badass. The video games I knew that. But like they just didn't do that back in the day. No, they didn't. Yeah. But you know that he's a badass. Mm-hmm. You know, he's intimidating yeah. for a reason. Like, yeah. Yeah, you didn't get that intensity yeah. from the old trilogy because you yeah. know, he's just fucking choking people and yeah. just storming around and everyone puts you get it. In, you you get fight. it. Yeah, you get a little bit of it in Empire. But you don't get like... A little, but not that. Yeah, not that. So... Um, so and then you mentioned this in the reaction. Uh, the medical droid who was uh, attending Anakin, who was mortally injured, which is George's idea, which is a great thing. Episode 5. Yeah. No. Yeah, episode 5. Yeah. Uh, so that was cool. And also a medical droid attending future Anakin. Just a couple a, a couple years from now, he's going to be all hooked up the droids and hooked on a medical... Table and on a course on yeah, on life support, yeah. No. So it was cool. It was like a foreshadow as well, and of course you hear Vader's breathing. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, the respirator. Yeah. So like when you have Anakin be that much of a badass, like it's like it makes perfect sense. Okay, when he's going to save everyone, you got to have a part where he's injured to show that okay he's not he's not Superman. He's not invincible, yeah, he's not invincible. Uh, we know he lives because we know this is Star Wars, and we know he dies in Episode Six. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's valuable, right? Yeah. Honestly, I think it makes him being so brave and heroic. The Jedi that Obi Wan told Luke, like, "Hey, your your dad, he was a hard ass. He was the bravest, best star pilot. He was the ultimate Jedi. Yeah. He was a cunning. He was a good friend. He was a cunning warrior. We we get to see that. And I love the prequel movies, but we don't get to see much of that. We see we ha- we see how adept he is, but like we, his attitude isn't there. And then Episode Three, like, yeah, he's sacrif- like he's going back to help these clone troopers and Obi-Wan's like, ah, leave them. <laughs> yeah. They're doing their job. Yep. And we see how he struggles with that and how he wants to save Obi-Wan. Well, it seems inhuman. Yeah. When they just, when they write things off like that. Yeah, Anakin, like, he is brave, but then he turns to the dark side and kills all these kids. Yep. So that George always knew who Anakin was and in his head. I'm so glad that, we're, we're, that kids and our generation were seeing Anakin be cool. Yeah, I mean, and be brave. Yeah, you're getting a little um, more. But that being said, he's out for pretty much most of the episode. Yeah, he is. He is down. He's helping. He does save his guard. Yeah, and things like that. But for the most part, it's all it's Ahsoka's episode. Yeah, and whatever, and uh, whatever that other bitch's name is, um, uh, <laughs> um, Ayla Secura. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Ayla Secura, she uh, she was yeah. a, she's a hell of a Jedi. <laughs> she's a hell of a Jedi. So okay, so I had a crush on Amy Allen who plays Ayla Secura in episode three. I remember. Yeah, I remember. I had her on my desktop. Through, I would walk through the kitchen at his house. Mm-hmm. His dad's house, yeah, and Shane would be at the at the monitor, just, and there she'd be <laughs> on the fucking monitor. I'm walking out. What the fuck are you doing? Nothing. Like, look at this. Nothing. No, no, look at this, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but now, yeah. But yeah. I mean, she's fucking hot. Yeah. So and, and you know, and I ain't gonna deny that I didn't look at her. Oh, of course. Yeah. One thing that's great about course. this character, she pl- she's played by Jennifer Hale. Okay. Yeah. So prominent female voice actors. Yeah. So Jennifer Hale and did you play Kotor two? I know you played the first one. I played a little bit of two, maybe the beginning, enough to know what Nihilus is sucking the life out of yeah. the planet. Yeah. So on, in Kotor two, she plays Bastila. So she's a Jedi who's there to help the, the main character in oh, Kotor right. two. Um, she plays various other roles, like she plays the female version of Commander Shepard in Mass Effect, one of my favorite game series of all time. Mm-hmm. And you will know her from Elder Solid, I'm sure, right? Yeah, she's Naomi. Okay, and she's played a million of the games that I played and haven't played in a ton of animated work. Yeah, SpongeBob. Yeah. Legend, SpongeBob. You asked, is, she, is that actress French? And she's not. Yeah, she's talking in a French accent for the role. Yeah, and she does a great job. It's great to see a because she embodies like these very, like, very feminine characteristics. Mm-hmm. But she is a brave, formidable fighter. Yeah. Okay, and that's awesome to see. Well, of course yeah, I mean, because you, know, you yeah. can have both. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean? well, we you have that with Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. You got that with Beatrix Kiddo. Yeah, you see, there's definitely strong female roles that can have the best of both worlds. Yes, it's good just to celebrate 
some of these feminine qualities. You know what I mean? And I, and I don't know if that's what George had in mind when he designed her outfit or whoever designed it. They might have saw this good looking, oh, let's fucking take her clothes off and paint her blue. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure at some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... sure that comes into play in the development of things. Well, but... Every woman in Star Wars is showing off that bod. Yeah, even so... late. I was going to say, I was going to say, and then I just literally remember I forgot Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. well, I guess that ain't technically true. But... Yeah. <laughs> so, but I ain't going to complain. No, I uh, admit, of what course. I am what I am as a man, and uh, I like to see some women in a the scary, really glad outfits. Okay, she's also a Jedi, and she was telling Ahsoka, "Like, hey, you have to do what's best for the group. Uh, you had to come with me, Anakin. Right now, like we've done all we can do for him. We got to find him help. Rex will stay behind. Uh, and staying behind, we were confronted with uh, those creatures. Yeah. So they're, they're like they're... these bird falcon. They they're the apex predator of this planet. Uh, this planet they landed on Meridun. Okay, and they are called Mastiff Falones. Well, it sounds like something to do with fucking hormones. Like a Mastiff. Or pheromones. Yeah. But the, when I first saw the thing's face in the weeds, it yeah. reminded me of the Skeksis from the Dark Crystal series. Okay, which, which I haven't seen. Okay, well, there's a one of the Skeksis is called The Scientist, and he's actually played, or his, his voice actor is Mark Hamill. Oh, okay. So, which is kind of funny. Yeah, that is funny. Uh, which came later, so obviously... Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like those. I like the action scene. It, you know, I said this during the reaction. It kind of like they're in the tall grass. Kind of remind me of Jurassic Park Two: The Lost World. Oh, the raptors. The raptors in the field. Yes. So the lemur type creatures. Uh, they're called. Uh, their species are called lermen. And what do you think of them? They're, they're these pass. They're the pacifist race. Well, they whenever came, I see them, I just reminded of Madagascar and the fucking lemurs on there. Yeah, and King Julian. Yeah. The, what do you think of the way they were rolling around? I didn't think much of it. I thought that when they started jumping, like, okay, this makes sense. These yeah. fuckers will jump. They're primates. Mm -hmm. I get it. And then he starts rolling. Yeah. Like that's straight out of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well. Well, so. so Okay, so the design for the Lerman is an unused concept that George had from Revenge of the Sith. All right. And Dave Filoni, he had an, an EU comic where there is this grass planet, and the Empire was fighting the natives there, and they were rolling around. But they were like these armadillo reptile type, kind of scary looking creatures. All right. Uh, so they liked that idea. Of just being on this grass planet, these things rolling around, and George just you re, just used some of these unused uh, concepts from Revenge of the Sith, created the lemur, uh, created the Lermans, and that's why we have them. And they are pacifists. They try to escape uh, the Galactic Civil War. Uh, they believe that the Jedi aren't true pacifists because they have weapons. They haven't laid down the weapons to fight. I think that you know I understand that well, viewpoint. Yeah, you get it, but at the same time, I mean. It this ain't exactly the same context, but you, it reminds me of the Amish. Mm -hmm. The Amish are great at what they do. Yeah. And they have their belief systems that yeah. they very... They yeah, I would, they love, to, I would to, love to live that, that way. That they yeah. adhere to. I wouldn't. Yeah. But they adhere to it. Yeah. And but at the same time, they can live that way here because people have already fought and died and bled to make this place what it is. No, you're right. Yeah. So, and that's the same anywhere. So... Yeah. Like the world, the world is... Like the world much, has already been painted blood, yeah. just like the Slayer song. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they, they, there's no way to around that. Mm -hmm. now, you can try to say it's a great thing to strive for, which maybe it is. Yeah, that's an entirely different conversation and a very yeah. deep rabbit hole. But the there's a time for peace, a time for war. You might say, yeah, which is a good what do you call it proverb mm -hmm. to get live by. Yeah, but uh, in all honesty, it's kind of naive. For yeah, these people the, do imagine that an intergalactic war yeah. will never reach them that they can hide. Yeah, and that, like, to, like just Mel, to, like, to write off Like Mel Jedi. Gibson in The Patriot. He's just going to keep his head uh, down. My brother, you know, he, why would he trade 5,000 tyrants five miles away? For, I mean, why, why would he trade one five, tyrant, like five, one tyrant 5,000 miles away for or whatever it is, and for 500 tyrants one mile away? Yeah. So, yeah. But at the same time, I, mean, I get that. Yeah, you know, it didn't change the fact that the war came to his doorstep. Yeah, it did. He killed his kids. Yeah. So he got drug into it anyway. Yeah, so he at did. The same time, same thing with these people. They yeah. think they're just going to escape and they can stand on their fucking soapbox and they can talk down to the Jedi. Like, You're carrying swords, motherfucker. Yeah. And, well, guess what? I'm assuming some war shit's going to come. War shit's going to happen. I don't know, Zach. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so his son, Wagtu, is a healer. 
And there was an interesting scene. Wag 2. Yeah, Wag 2. Yeah. Wag 2 reminds me of like Ice T or like a rapper. <laughs> you, should got, you guys need to check out a Rick and Morty reaction if you haven't. Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> so we had that scene where the Mastiff Falones were attacking, and Wag 2, instead of killing one, he, t- he just hog tied him. I get in. Leave him there to starve. Yeah, <laughs> die a slow death. Yeah, really. assumedly, right? Yeah, I don't, yeah, we can guess that maybe he untied it after. The yeah, death. or he left, or it's it's you know the maybe they have enough experience to know like when we tie this specific knot, they always get out after a day when we leave them there. Yeah, possibly. I mean, mm-hmm. it never it wasn't addressed in that episode. Yeah, anyway, so. yeah, but so it, it seems to be that their father, like the patriarch of that society, he's really he's really headstrong about that. He's like, yeah, we'd rather die. And the kids are like, oh, shit, I don't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, it's good to have those values, but you got to understand how to protect yourself if you need to. Well, it's kind of like um, okay. when you're talking about geopolitical mm-hmm. dealings around the world. Yeah. And you have political viewpoints that are realist, and some of them ain't so real. Yeah. So more like hopeful. Yeah. So there's, there's a real way to look at that, whereas if you're, yeah, you're going to let your son and your people be killed just because... Of your belief system and your pride, yeah. Or are you gonna? You still have your belief systems, but you sometimes you ain't got a choice. Yeah, yeah. So, also, I think this is really interesting. So, do you remember when Anakin was being healed, like in those so those pods that fall from the tree? I think that's a really kind of a cool idea that they use them as homes. Mm-hmm. And also, they secrete this oil that has these medicinal properties. Yeah, mutagen. Yeah, like these, like a mutagen, but like it's, it's well, it looks like mutagen. It's like some like third world form or outer rim version of Bacta that's unrefined. It just kind of reminds me of and Melaleuca oil. Right. So like Melaleuca oil in Australia, uh, the Brit, I think it was the Brits that were over there. Like they were at this tribe and this is maybe the legend to it. Uh, they were using this medicinal mud to heal their wounds. Like these, the, guy, the tribes over there, some of the, uh, the indigenous people. Mm-hmm. And then they noticed that it was just actually this tree was falling into the mud and it was uh, ev- evaporating, but it was uh, breaking, down. breaking down in the mud and it was basically, it was, it was creating this super mud and melaleuca oil has a lot of great healing properties. I mean, does it like, cure cancer or if you have a heart attack? You can't just take melaleuca oil, but you should take an aspirin, okay? Um, you know, but like for cuts and bruises, so there's antibacterial antiviral, antifungal, some really great For things. a lot of superficial wounds. Yeah, yeah. So they were using inner wounds as well. Just like in World War II, they were using coconuts for like blood transfusions. Okay. But, so it's always really interesting when you get back to nature because everything we have now is uh, taken from nature pretty much and we have enhanced it and everything else. Modified. Yeah. So it, it's just really cool. It made me think of uh, melaleuca oil. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, we did have something really cool. So Ayla Sakura talked about her master. Uh, her master in canon is Quinlan Vos. Do you remember who he is? Yeah, I remember him seeing him in some of the comics. I didn't read them religiously, yeah. but he's I also did. in episode two. Yeah, yeah. I do. So George saw that design. I want to do some of that guy. <laughs> he was just walking yeah. through some planet, right, with the troopers or some shit. When I, I thought he might have been Geonosis. I could be wrong. I can't remember. It's been a while since I, I can't remember. I, I, it's been a couple, not a couple years. I just. Just don't remember. <laughs> no, for me. So yeah. Like... So um, that Ava Kira, her master is Quinlan Vos. Uh, he he in the old EU, like he was an awesome Jedi. He had some great stories. He delved into the dark side as well during the war. Um, but I don't think he ever fell. If he did, it was temporary. But uh, if you like that character, stay tuned because we're going to see some Quinlan Vos in the Clone Wars. So okay. yeah, a little spoiler. Sorry, <laughs> I don't have too much else to say. I love this arc. I'm really glad you appreciate this first episode. We're getting towards the end of season one, and as everyone know, uh, every season gets better and better. So, um, you know, I know the first one is a little bit of a chore, but uh, there's some great stuff, and there's better stuff to come. Some of the best stuff to come, in my opinion, uh, in all of Star Wars. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Anything else? I ain't got shit. All right, we're out of here. Guys, thank you so much for watching our reaction and this review breakdown of this episode. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. Appreciate all the likes and comments that we're getting. Um, if you guys like us, you want to support us, just like and subscribe, okay? And if you're a new time viewer, just check out other reactions as well. Uh, WandaVision, uh, The Falcon and Winter Soldier, things like that. Rick and-